Um, how is nothing? I'm ignoring this. So here's the here's my take on why I'm ignoring this. <laughs> um, so I don't think this is a special problem. That's why I'm ignoring it. I don't think representing nothing is a special problem. As far as from the from the sensory motor integration theory aspect of this, if there's nothing being sensed in a location, there's no neural representation of that thing in that space. Now you're talking about um, I mean, so the, the, the lack of a representation of sensory input in a space is essentially information. It means you haven't sensed anything there before. So y you could make the philosophical argument, is nothing something, but let's not do that. <laughs> um, but as far as the conceptual knowledge of zero, or in mathematics especially, of zero, or the concept of nothing being somewhere, that's, a, that's an abstract concept, just like any other abstract concept. So I don't see anything very special about the nothing representation. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And maybe I'll, I might as well post this video at the end. Because <laughs> I throw my two cents in. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, what I found is he's talking about two different things. And, and, and I think putting them or confusing them. There is the, the concept of zero, but yeah. that's, that's later in his post. And there is the concept of looking at some empty space and then contemplating it. And those are completely different things. And I think Bitkin uh, uh, remarked it also. Uh, yeah. And so I, I, I also only thought he was thinking about contemplating empty space, looking at, at your screen, but looking at the space before and then trying to understand it. And that's why I, I answered my question. But it has nothing to do with the concept of, of, of nothingness. So, I think I wasn't answering his question. Yeah, maybe so. And, and I'm addressing this to Nick. I, I haven't kept up with this thread, I must admit, um, um, because I don't, um, I don't know if it's going anywhere. As far as, because I think that neurologically, like you said, there's, there's the two things. And the idea of zero, or even the concept of nothing, is, a, is an abstract concept that we can chuck in the bin of all the other abstract concepts that we learn that don't have physical representations in the world, like democracy, you know. Um, and that's it. That's that simple. If we figure out abstract concepts, we figure out nothing, how we represent nothing. And yeah. in, the, in the other aspect where you're imagining a space and you know there's nothing in the middle of that space, um, I think that's hard for me to grasp. I don't, maybe if, you're getting into a weird area where you're applying your uh, conceptual knowledge into a physically represented space, you know, and, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking too. Uh, and we don't ha we don't say much about that um, in HTM theory anyway. Well, well, there is there was a part uh, I don't know who said that. Um, I think it was Marcus or or, or someone else. Um, when you, when you contemplate the, the cup, the Nomenta cup, and it has a, an ear, there is the space between the ear, and there's also the space inside the cup. Yeah. And some people said, are there points uh, represented in the grid space that are part of the cup, but are actually represent nothing? And I thought that was an interesting, an interesting thing, because if, if you go with your finger from, from side to side in the cup, yeah. There is the displacement between the two sides, right? But you somehow also might have a grid space representing the empty. So there's the empty space. there's definitely a grid space representing that area of the object's reference frame. There's a grid space representing the area of space six feet away from the cup. You know, your your grid your grid field mechanism applies to all spaces. So like if there's a gap in the cup, there's definitely a grid cell activation that represents every location within that gap, even if there's nothing there. But the way you represent knowledge is by combining that grid space representation with sensory input that you have collected over time. So yeah. just the fact that there is a grid representation for all points in, in an object space doesn't mean that you represent sensory features at those locations. Well, if if, if you take your cup and you close your eyes and someone gives you the cup and, and for some reason the cup is filled with cement or with, uh, with, with whatever hard stuff 
and you go with your finger in it and you expect nothing and you feel something yeah then your grid cells and your sensory feedback is going to say hey i was expecting nothing there no, no so your grid cells won't your grid cells are just representing the location of the feature and then in another layer is where you get bursting happening with the combination of sensor and location that's where the yes. bursting occurs the grid cells contribute to that but they're okay yeah Okay, so okay, so the, the grid cells are just the, the other input. Uh, you have the input and the feature input, the, the sensor input and the grid input. And at some point, you expect nothing because you know you're going with your finger from one side to the other. Right. You don't expect anything. And that nothing might also be encoded. In no, I, case, I don't think it is, especially not in HTM theory. You're not expecting nothing. You're just. You're just not making predictions, right? When you're not making predictions, you're expecting nothing, essentially. So in HTM anyway, as you move your finger through something, if if I felt something here before, let me, if I felt something in this object's reference frame before, I'll have predictions occurring ahead of me in time that, that is saying, so you're, so you're gonna feel this at this point. <laughs> But if for some reason I don't get any sensory information, those predictions will be wrong and you and they'll go away, right? They, they won't burst, they'll just be wrong and they won't be reinforced. You won't feel anything. Now, if you're moving through a space and you're not feeling anything, there's no, there's no predictions. If, you've if you're moving through a space and you've never felt anything in that space before, you won't have predictions. That's nothing. You're just not predicting you're gonna feel anything. Okay. At least that's... I think that's the way it works. <laughs> yeah, and even if, well, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I, I can accept it. It's, 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 it's just that, that I think that certain empty spaces are also predicted. There is, I mean, if, if you're not sensing it, but if you're looking at it, for instance, you're looking at the Numenta logo, and somehow someone draw an extra line between two dots. You yeah. know it's not, it's not supposed to be there, then, then you know that where it was empty, now there is something, and you're saying, hey, this is not a Numenta logo, this is something changed. So this empty space, this, this empty line that should never be there, isn't that also part of the Numenta logo, the, the emptiness? I'm not sure, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, I see what you're this. saying, but I, but I don't think so. I, I mean, okay. you, could, you could think of it that way, but then... I don't know. I, I I would only I only think the brain is representing what it senses, not what it doesn't sense. And the structure of the world constructs itself out of those sensory inputs. That's that's how. And so we're not always constructing empty space in our models. We're just constructing what we have sensed. Yeah. Now we can always apply our ideas and our, our imagination of empty space and what might be there to the reference frames that we're constantly modeling, right? I can take my reference frame right now and imagine a cat right in my hands in front of me where there is usually nothing, right? There's never been a cat here, but I can imagine it. And when I'm doing that, I'm taking, I'm doing a completely different process that we're not even thinking about, you know, taking the representation from elsewhere in the brain and superimposing it into another reference frame, right? Yeah. 